Seltzers, bubbly and refreshing. If you've ever wanted to make your own hard seltzer, it's never been easier. And if you're a fan of holiday flavors, then you're in for a real treat. Because today, I'm going to show you how to make a delicious sparkling water with a splash of cranberry flavor. I'm Trent Musho, and you're watching The Brew Show. Let's get festive with cranberry hard seltzer. Seltzers are very trendy these days, but they can be a bit on the pricey side for my taste. And for what reason? We're talking about alcoholic water here. It shouldn't be expensive. And as it turns out, when you make it at home, it's a fraction of the cost. Plus, it couldn't be easier. And it's a perfect fermentation project for beginners or a friend that might be curious about getting into brewing. Today I'm putting a festive spin on it and we'll be using cranberry flavoring to go with the season. But the base seltzer can set the stage for all kinds of flavors. Before we get started, please take a second to subscribe to my channel for more simple fermentation videos like this. Now let's make some seltzer. For this recipe, I'm using distilled water to start us on a blank slate. I'm using two gallons of water and it will yield just under two gallons once complete. Feel free to scale this recipe up or down to make as much as you'd like. I'm gonna keep this as simple as possible and just dump the water into my sanitized fermenter. To that, I'm gonna to toss in about a gram each of gypsum and calcium chloride. These are water salts that will improve the flavor since distilled water doesn't have much of a taste. But if you don't have this, you can just omit these additions. Next I'm going to add sugar, and specifically I'm adding corn sugar or dextrose. I'm adding 2 pounds. The great part about corn sugar is that it easily dissolves in room temperature water. But if you're using other sugars, you might want to heat up the water to get the sugar to fully dissolve. Lastly I'm going to add some nutrients for the yeast. I'm adding 10 grams of DAP dionium phosphate and 3 grams of Fermate O, which is an organic yeast nutrient. Both of these items are sold at most homebrew stores, but I've also linked them in the description. Adding both of these is a required step and shouldn't be skipped. The reason we need both nutrients is because the water and sugar has nothing to benefit the yeast's health. In beer, we get nutrients from the mash that can ensure our yeast can properly do their job. Without these nutrients, you're stunting the yeast growth, and you'll end up with a stuck fermentation and incomplete final gravity. Using both versions of nutrients, you'll ensure you get the full spectrum needed for those little yeasty boys. Speaking of yeast, I'm using my favorite EC1118 Champagne Yeast. I like this for seltzers because it's highly attenuative and it will make this nice and dry. What seasonal flavors would you put in a seltzer? Peppermint seltzer, anyone? Now I pop a top on and shake things up, dissolving everything and to incorporate oxygen. I add an airlock to allow CO2 to escape and not let anything in. In order to know our ABV later, I take a quick original gravity reading and get 1.040. I set the fermenter in a cool dark area and allow it to ferment for two weeks. The extra time is needed since the yeast have a lot of work to do with the limited nutrients in the water. But some other yeast, like the popular Norwegian farm yeasts, can rip through fermentation much faster if you're in a rush. After two weeks, once the airlock bubbling stopped, I take a sample and take a final gravity reading. I get a reading of 1.000, which means this seltzer comes in at 5.3%. On its own, the seltzer has some fruity notes that would be really good by itself, but I'm going to add some flavors now to make it festive. For the cranberry flavor, I'm using this natural cranberry extract. The back of the package has some suggestions on how much to use, so for this 2 gallon batch, I'm using 24 milliliters of the extract. This liquid measuring syringe helps me be accurate, but you can just eyeball it. Just be careful and start small. You can always add more, but you can't take any away. I chose an extract because I want to keep the seltzer clear, but if you want to go more natural, you can make a cranberry puree and add it for flavor and color. You might want to let it sit in the fermenter for a few additional days to incorporate. Additionally, I'm going to add one milliliter of Biofine Clear to aid in clarity. This is optional if you don't mind a slightly hazier seltzer. Now I put the fermenter in a fridge to cold crash for half a day. This will just help the yeast drop out so I get the clearest water going into the keg. After it's chilled, I take it out and then transfer it into the keg. If you don't have a keg, you can also bottle condition this, using the steps laid out in my bottling versus kegging video. But kegging this just means I can drink it faster. To get this ready as fast as possible, I'll be burst carbonating it. To do that, I set the pressure on my regulator to 45 psi and will let it ride for 15 hours. After 15 hours, I reduced the PSI to serving pressure, and at that point, the seltzer was ready to drink. This seltzer is sweet and extremely sparkling. 
The fruitiness of the cranberry is perfect for this, and a great change up from the heavy beers of the season. Plus I love how by kegging it, you can control how sparkling seltzer can be. And for me, I love to crank it up. On top of how great this tastes, it also is easy on the wallet. When comparing the cost to make this seltzer to something like White Claw, my seltzer comes in at about $5 per gallon, whereas the competition is about $14 per gallon. And I'm sure the savings are even more when you brew larger batches. Plus when you make it yourself, you know everything that's going in, and you can tweak it to your liking. If you're into these hard seltzers, or know someone that is, then now's a great time to brew one up in time for the perfect holiday gift. If you plan on making a seltzer, or have experience making one, let me know what flavors you're making. And if you have any questions about making seltzer, be sure to let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.